On tonight's CTV News, local musicians have a new place to call home. We have a sneak peek at the Ellerslie Flower Show, and three years on from the February 22nd earthquake, we find out how our communities are faring. This is CTV News, I'm Grant Mangan. A prominent Christchurch businessman is still waiting for the City Council to hold up its end of a bargain. Anthony Goff was promised engineering reports from the City Council into its Litchfield Street car park a fortnight ago, but has yet to hear back from them. For two weeks, Anthony Goff has been waiting for answers. He's working with an overseas investor who's planning to pump $10 million into restoring a central city car parking building. But the council's yet to send him an updated engineering report to prove whether or not the project is viable. From the outside, the Litchfield Street car park building doesn't look dangerous. Restart Mall backs onto it. You can even reach out and touch it. But after three years, no action's been taken in getting this repaired and reopened. Developers are reluctant to push ahead with their rebuild plans until a permanent solution has been reached. We need car parking and we need to get our head out of the sand and we need to actually face the reality and get it fixed. The Mayor's office declined to speak to CTV News on camera when we broke the story a fortnight ago. Instead, the Mayor personally emailed Anthony Goff, attaching a copy of an old engineering report. She then promised to send him an updated report within two weeks. Time's up come 5pm tomorrow. Goff has been asking the Mayor for engineering reports into the building since late last year. He said, sounds like a good idea, and I said, I need the engineering report so I can put it to the, the funder so we actually know the real story rather than sort of hearsay. And she said, oh, I should be able to get those DE reports, the um, engineering reports, but they haven't arrived on my desk yet. Um, and I said, do I need to issue an official information request? Which I will do. He's had a look at the old engineering report she sent him, and he likes what he sees. <laughs> Totally repairable. It's just the foundations are okay. May have sunk a small amount um, on the northwest corner, but as the whole building, all the floors slope, it doesn't really matter. Um, it just needs some steel work to give it a bit more um, strength and bracing. But Goff's investor needs to see the newest report before he's prepared to give the council a loan to repair the building. A Christchurch City Council spokesperson has since told CTV News the council's in the process of producing a damage assessment report for the Litchfield Street car park. It will then be used as part of their insurance negotiations. Because of that, it's commercially sensitive. It's not yet known whether this means Anthony Goff won't get to see the latest engineering report, as he was promised two weeks ago. Marcus Gibbs, CTV News. A former Earthquake Commission employee has been found in contempt for deliberately flouting court orders. Last year, Mark Krieger released 83,000 private insurance claims. Breaching confidentiality, the High Court found him in contempt of court after proceedings brought against him by the Solicitor General. He's also been fined $5,000. The insurance claims were uploaded to his blog named EQC Truths. Two days after appearing online, Mr Krieger was prohibited from sharing the spreadsheet, pending the hearing of EQC's application for an interim injunction. Mr Krieger faced controversy again after posting a blog stating he had obey the ruling and not share the information further. But he went against his word. The day the interim injunction was granted, Mr Krieger criticised the decision and posted hyperlinks to the websites where spreadsheets could be found. The rebuild of Sydenham's main street has stalled, so why has no progress been made in three years? The eyesore of Sydenham might have been cleaned up, but as reported in today's press, there are even deeper problems. The development of Sydenham's main street has been held up due to failed plans, proposed height restrictions and small land titles. After three years, Colombo Street remains unchanged since the earthquakes brought the old brick buildings down. Landowners are struggling to reach on agreements to join forces and rebuild, while small lots of land are uneconomical to develop alone. Buildings are height restricted to two and three storeys, but business owners warn concept plans limited to just three storeys are challenging and uneconomical. 
The Colombo shopping complex has been a boom for the area, attracting foot traffic and retailers to the southern end of Colombo Street. Meanwhile, the Christchurch City Council has approved more than half a million dollars to create a village square and planning work is now underway. Business owners are hoping that further progress will soon start to happen in Colombo Street. One local MP was helping clean up Christchurch over the weekend. With a paintbrush in hand, Wigram MP Megan Woods and a group of volunteers scanned the streets painting over graffiti. Many people lending a helping hand were under 17 years old. Over 200 people have been donating their time for three hours each morning to clean up the streets. On Saturday, Hornby's Denton Park, Richmond, Sprayden and Avonhead all received a fresh lick of paint where unwanted graffiti caught the public's eye for all the wrong reasons. Well, coming up, we look back at our city's three-year journey from the February earthquake. Every Tuesday night, I talk to the newsmakers and decision takers to get answers to the questions that have gone unanswered. It's time to listen carefully, see clearly, and understand the real issues. Join me for Point of View, Tuesday nights at 8.30 on CTV. Hi, I'm Caitlin, the naturopath here at Staywell Pharmacy. Working with the pharmacist, I use herbal and nutritional medicine to recommend natural alternatives for your health. This can be to counteract any side effects of your medication, general health advice, or natural options for you and your family. I'm also available for consultations. So come in and see us at Staywell Pharmacy. 27 Shands Road, Hornby. Staywell Pharmacy, live well, stay well. Avoid the cowboys when it comes to relocating. Trust A1 Movers, a family business since 1993 that guarantees a professional job every time. We carefully handle and wrap your valued items ensuring they have a safe journey. Secure storage and insurance options also available. A1 Movers, the careful, caring, moving company. Love music, love summer, then Ingham Lazy Sundays in the Botanic Gardens Archery Lawn is the place to be. Every Sunday from 3pm through January to February and it's all free. So make Sunday your day to soak up summer and take time to recharge with family and friends relaxing in the beautiful Botanic Gardens. Listen to some great music and enjoy some of the many surrounding attractions. The perfect way to unwind. Ingham Lazy Sundays, putting summer into Sundays. Meet me there in Edgware. Bailey's Bar have reopened in their new location on the corner of Edgware Road and Colombo Street. Bring some friends along and enjoy a great range of top brand ales and our fine selection of wines, coupled with good music and a friendly ambience. <laughs> the perfect place to start your day or evening out. Come and enjoy the great atmosphere at Bailey's Bar. Al Jazeera News, international news right off the satellite bringing you up to the minute coverage of world events. Al Jazeera News, weekday mornings at 6 o'clock, right here on CTV. Three years on, how far has Christchurch come? Marcus Gibbs takes a look back at the years following the big earthquakes and gives his thoughts on the city's progress. Christchurch, February the 22nd, 2011. At 12.51, a 6.3 magnitude earthquake hit the city. Buildings came down, 185 people died. In the aftermath of the earthquake, promises were made. The very next day, Prime Minister John Key promised Christchurch would be rebuilt. Over the last three years, the city's leaders have worked to do exactly that. But this rebuild has been fraught with controversy. Lives were shattered in the earthquake, homes were wrecked, and the turmoil has had a lasting effect on the city. Three years on, much of the roads are still wrecked and are undergoing repairs. Christchurch has been invaded by a high-vis army of construction workers working to fix the damage. The $2.9 billion rebuild will see more than 650 kilometres of waste border piping fixed by 2016. That's the length of State Highway 1 between Chevyetin and Vicargo. 
it's a massive job. About 50% of the work should be finished by the end of the year. But it's tough for Cantabrians. The constant stream of road cones is a sign that life is yet to return to normal. Once the last cone disappears, will normalcy return? Elsewhere in the city, buildings are going up. Designs for a new city are starting to become a reality. The earthquake recovery minister called 2013 the year of the rebuild. That rebuild is now finally starting to take shape in 2014. A huge amount of pressure is on architects to create the Christchurch of the future. A third of the city's heritage buildings have been lost, but in 50 to 100 years time, these new designs could represent Christchurch's new historic past. Criticism has been made about the look of the buildings. Too glassy, too boxy, but every generation has a new style of building. The Education Minister's shake-up of Christchurch schools is already starting to take effect. Last year, the first of the schools to close shut their doors for the final time. With several intermediates now gone, Hornby and Linwood's Year 7 and Year 8 students are now attending local high schools. The first merger of two schools has started. Burwood School and Windsor are now one school, Waitakere. The students are working together on two separate sites until a new school was built. Looking to the future and the government wants to make its blueprint a reality as soon as possible. Once complete, these projects should attract investors to the city, or at least that's the idea. The government's blueprint for the central city was released in July 2012. Work on the Avon River precinct has already started and the public has been left impressed. And it's brilliantly designed, well worked out, You've got that nice boardwalk that runs along the river there, sort of get up, and, up close and personal with it, I think it's absolutely fantastic. Nine other major projects will start later this year. After acquiring land from investors, work on the eastern frame has already started. Patches of green are slowly appearing, like a quilt hugging the CBD. But littered throughout the central city are buildings left untouched for three years. Is that good enough? Flamboyant property developer Anthony Goff would disagree. I know heritage advocates would say we should save everything. Let's get realistic. There is not an endless pot of money. Let's pick the winners and let's go with those. Things like this need to be moved off the site and turn to the grass, whatever. Sarah declined a request to tour the CBD three years on, explaining away the abandoned buildings as isolated cases, each one different involving complex insurance issues. But when do we draw the line? How long is too long to leave a building untouched? Should property owners be given a hurry up by the earthquake recovery minister until these buildings are down or repaired? That's Anthony Goff's view. Other grand designs have now been unveiled. The Emergency Services and Justice Precinct will be the largest multi-agency government co-location project in New Zealand's history. More than 2,000 people will work in or use the 40,000 square metre precinct daily. At the peak of construction, 500 people will be employed. A world-class convention centre will soon be built with the aim of attracting business events and conferences to Christchurch. Supported by hotels and working with facilities in other cities, this precinct should help grow the economic base of the region. Designers have until March to deliver proposals for the convention centre precinct. About three quarters of the land has been purchased by the Crown, with the aim of clearing buildings by August. But nothing ever goes to plan. The earthquake recovery minister has told CTV News he's disappointed with the lack of progress with the innovation precinct, blaming the hold-ups on another government department. Absolutely dreadful. And uh, uh, the innovation precinct is being uh, led by the Ministry for... Uh, business, um, innovation and employment uh, and uh, they don't seem to be able to make much progress. Christchurch's mayor has given her state of the city speech causing controversy with her views on the rebuild. She called the former council irresponsible for signing a binding cost sharing agreement. She's also hinted that her relationship with the earthquake recovery minister is strained. She said the government has not yet forged the partnership that the council needs to make real progress. We need to be partners, we need to do this together, otherwise um, we won't get the best um, outcome for the city as a whole. Minister Brownlee wasn't impressed with the Mayor's speech, calling parts of it concerning and disappointing. The Mayor's comments have come at a difficult time for the city. As Christchurch approaches the three-year mark, the city's leaders should be uniting and not pulling in opposite directions. If they don't work together, the rebuild of Christchurch will never be smooth. Marcus Gibbs, CTV News.
Mike Davison's lived in Christchurch all, most all of his life. But it's his first time as a community board member. As chair for Shirley Papanui, how does he feel the north of the city is doing? Mike Davidson's lived in Christchurch almost all his life, but it's his first term as a community board member. As chair for Shirley Papanui, how does he feel the north of the city is doing? The north of Christchurch is progressing quite, quite well. We obviously, didn't have the same damage to the extent of some of the other suburbs like in the, in the east, but there was still quite a lot of damage within the north, especially to a lot of, lot of residential houses around the Dudley Creek, areas, areas like that. So there has been a lot of devastation. Mr Davidson feels the residential damage to his ward is lesser known than the others due to the severity of damage to other areas, namely the east. He says, on the whole, businesses are doing well. See, there's going to be the odd one that struggle. Um, and there's a lot of people have to relocate. So places have come out of the city have come out out north as well to relocate out out north. And there's been some places that have obviously been um, closed down because of the earthquake damage to houses like um, the Mitre 10 in, in Edgeware. Uh, the Super Valley there had to get rebuilt, but so the Super Valley has been rebuilt. We haven't had too much negative feedback. Um, so I've just been in the community board since October, so it's the first time that I've been on there, and the feedback I'm getting has been positive. Community board chairman Mike Davidson says his community is progressing well, considering. I believe it's, it's positive. There's positive signs in the community. Um, I don't see too many negative things. I'm not a person that looks at the negative side. There is obviously is issues out, out there. There's always going to be issues in Christchurch. It's been three years, but we're still obviously re rebuilding. And now, Mike Davidson says the city and community have a chance to move ahead. Great opportunity now to really shape the future of, of Christchurch and the, and the north of Christchurch. And it's, it's going to be some good times ahead. Patrick Phelps, CTV News. CTV talked to the locals of North Christchurch to see how they are coping three years after the February earthquakes, how their lives have changed and what they would like to see done. Three years on from the February 22nd earthquake, CTV went around Christchurch to speak to its communities to see how they're coping. Today we went to Northwood Supercentre and this is what the locals living in north of the city had to say. We've been very lucky out here. We haven't had any major damage at all. We're all sorted. Christchurch is a neat city. I love it. Yeah. I'll show you a bit of the boot. I'm not sure I'm not sure here, but um, yeah. Love Christchurch. We lost our house in Avondale after 55 years. We're good. We're actually out on Banks Peninsula, so we were reasonably light off. But um, yeah, it's good. The roads, which is understandable because they're all munted. Yeah, a few cracks in the paint and things like that, but not a lot of damage where we are. Just some of the workmanship that's been done. It's been lacklustre. Getting the roads and footpaths fixed out of our way in the New Brighton area. The biggest frustration is waiting for uh, uh, my rebuild to start, which, you know, I'm not the only person waiting for a rebuild. Um, my house is livable, but it'd still be nice to sort of be in a house that's straight and true. Yeah, I'm really excited to be a part of it, actually. I think it's going to be really exciting when it's all done, and it's really good to be part of something new and vibrant in New Zealand. And are you happy with the way Christchurch is coming along so far? Can't build Christchurch overnight. So hopefully it will be good. Should they have to wait three years? No. They pay for taxes and everything else. They should be able to get their house fixed. Start slow and don't rush into stupid design. Just people that are in the red zone to help them out. Because some of them are three years on, still, still in the uh, red, is, so to speak. Any suggestions that you like to be, you like to see in the city? More swimming pools. Something to replace Kiwi Two would be really good. Um, less cones on the street and um, yeah, get our roads a bit better. Oh, people need, don't need to be so, so greedy and want more than what they're entitled to. Still to come, Christchurch's rowing clubs are praying for smooth sailing three years on from the quakes. Join us tonight at 6 for DW World News. Informative, lively, international news, breaking stories and global developments. DW News, weekdays at 6pm, right here on CTV. My son's helped me greatly with my independence now that I've got more mobility. Mum, I've been looking into stand assist chairs for more mobility. They recline back with a footrest, then when you want to get out of them they stand you up. 
You can even sleep on them. More Mobility can bring one out for a free trial. There's even electric beds too. What do you think? For more range and more expert advice, see More Mobility, corner Clarence and Princess Streets off Blenheim Road. What a difference more mobility makes. Just 20 minutes drive from Christchurch and nestled in the tranquil surroundings of Littleton Harbour is Canterbury's best kept treasure, Living Springs. The perfect setting for large or small conference groups, team building and development, weddings and special events. With accommodation and catering options available, our facilities and recreational activities are ideal for any occasion. Enjoy the breathtaking scenery and leave feeling revitalised. Hey, what's up with you? Oh, I've got birthdays coming up, I've got bills coming out of my ears. I just don't have the money. Well, why don't you just go to the pawn shop? Yes, the pawn shop has a massive selection of rings, watches, car audio, sports gear, heaps of DVDs, digital cameras, computers and musical instruments. They have just about everything. Sounds good to me. Let's go. Everything's as good as gold at the pawn shop. 77 Ferry Road and 396 Blenheim Road. Take Note Ferry Mead is an important part of the local community providing real personalised service. Locally owned and operated, our store has a New Zealand Post Agency service and lotto, all part of meeting the needs in our local area. Because we're local, we tailor our range and special offers just for you, including a great range of books, stationery, cards, magazines and gift ideas. Take note Ferry Me, open seven days. Let's face it, everyone has an agenda. And guess what? So do I. Every week, I'll pick three stories that grab my attention. Agenda with me, Brent Goff. Three years on from the earthquakes and Christchurch's rowing clubs are still waiting for water-based training to be back as it was pre-quake. Haven Rowing says the club was well supported with their damaged land-based facilities, but on the water it hasn't been so smooth. Patrick Phelps reports. The Avon River, home to several rowing clubs, and they all use the facilities here at Kerr's Reach. The earthquakes devastated the rowing community. We lost everything. Um, we were removed from the river for a while, uh, obviously due to the heavy pollution from cracked drains and sewage just going in there. It's not. It's not the healthiest at the best of times, but it was a lot worse. All the land-based facilities were gone. The boat sheds, the clubs, most of the boats survived, but they had nowhere to store them. Training was difficult to say the least. We did a lot of training in Ashburton, which was highly unrealistic to do on a daily basis. And uh, we also spent a period of time training on the Selwyn River at Lincoln. Um, neither of which were really suitable. There was also a time period where we relocated temporarily to the Waimakariri River. The Avon Rowing Club manager says they've received a lot of support from local government, companies like Total Span and Fulton Hogan, local funding and support from the government. This whole area has kind of been torn apart, everything removed and then put back with new facilities, temporary facilities but still usable. So we've yeah, been extremely lucky from the land side of things. But there's troubled waters down at Kerr's Reach. Before the earthquakes, rowers had a stretch of five kilometres, seven on a good day when the tide was right, but now... Now we are at 1,850 metres, so it's a pretty substantial decrease. And what's the average length of a rowing race? About 2Ks, isn't it? 2K. Yes. So how does Notice that... Notice there's a 150 metre shortfall. And how yeah. does that work? Uh, well, it means that we have to adapt our training a lot. Um, we can't do endurance pieces, which is, tends to be the staple in rowing training, and we've had to do a lot more high intensity short bursts just to try and get that base that would be what we'd be able to achieve on a longer stretch. The loss of length due to a few bridges closed downstream, namely the Avondale Bridge. This causes a number of hassles, congestion of rowers which can cause crashes and near misses. One of the big problems has been the disruption to the coaching method. The river doesn't allow for coaches to be on the water, and cycling was always the way. They used a cycle path next to the river, but since the quakes it hasn't been repaved. You are sort of generating your own movement while trying to talk to them, it can be hard for them to hear you anyway, but that path used to be sealed. Now it's, uh, I mean, it has been partially recreated, but it's very rough and 
uh, the the coaches are sort of on mountain bikes and duh, 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 along and um, the athletes in the boat can't hear a single thing they say and it's quite dangerous to the coaches they're trying to they need to watch the path while trying to watch the athletes while trying to talk it's yeah it's dangerous not just that path but the loss of a footbridge has affected the coaches cycling this is the footbridge um, I was talking about. It, coaches used to come right over this and just follow their crews all the way up. Now they're forced to stop on the corner here, um, which means that they, yeah, they can't follow them up and crews will tend to stop and get directions from their coach on this corner, which creates a log jam. We have quite a few crashes at this corner as a result, or near misses. Yeah, just a lot of yelling at each other to get out of the way. Sort of a heavy stop, stop, stop. stop. Yeah, yeah, they're pretty good at communicating really, um, just because the plant's so expensive and damages are such an inconvenience, but it's, yeah, this is a huge problem. As far as the club are aware, the bridge isn't being replaced. They've been told numerous times the Avondale will be repaired, but they'll believe that when they see it. In the meantime, like Old Man River, they'll just keep rolling along. Patrick Phelps, CTV News. If you're driving around the central city, CTV's new traffic update will assist you navigating the repairs taking place. Hello travellers, to help you plan your journey around the central city, here's an update on major roadworks which may cause delays this week. First up, ongoing works on Durham Street will continue to slow down traffic. Please avoid this route during peak hours. We suggest using Fitzgerald Ave as an alternative route south. Remember, Madras Street from Morehouse Ave to Allen Street will be reduced to one lane later this week. When that happens, Fitzgerald is suggested as an alternative route north. Keep watching CTV News first at 5 for further updates on what's happening with the central city roads. And in the meantime, visit the Transport for Christchurch website. And what a spectacular day it's been today. Can we expect more sunshine tomorrow? Let's check out your regional weather. Kia ora and good evening Canterbury, a northwesterly airflow is tending southwesterly over the region today as a weak cold front passes through. Taking a look now at the weather for your area. Kai Kaikoura sits on 11 overnight with a cloudy day at first and a few showers and southwesterly winds but becoming fine and mostly sunny during the afternoon with a daytime high of 20 degrees and northeasterlies developing. Hanma Springs becoming fine after 9 overnight with sunny periods during the day and only light winds to worry about. Your daytime high sits on 22 degrees. Rangiora and Kaipoi cloudy at first with a few showers after 11 overnight and some southwesterly winds, but becoming fine and mostly sunny during the day with a daytime high of 20 and northeasterly winds developing. Christchurch cloudy at first after 11 overnight, but sunny later on with a high of 20 degrees coming through. Southwesterlies dying out and northeasterlies developing as well. Ashburton becoming fine and sunny during the day after 11 overnight with northeasterlies developing later on on Wednesday afternoon. Your daytime high sits on 20 degrees. In Timaru, early morning cloud clearing after 11 overnight. The showers will clear as well and sunny periods increasing with northeasterly winds developing and a high of 20 degrees. In other areas now, most areas sitting on 11 overnight with highs ranging between 20 and 21. Some areas starting out with some cloud, but all those areas ending up fine. Arthur's Pass and Greymouth on 7 and 10 overnight, but joining everyone later on for a high of 21 and 23. Arthur's Pass fine throughout the day, Greymouth just having a little bit of cloud. Looking ahead for Canterbury, mostly fine and sunny on Thursday with scattered high cloud later on and moderate northeasterlies with milder temperatures. Fine on Friday with high cloud increasing and moderate north to northeasterly winds and rather warm temperatures. That's it from me. Have a great night. We'll have another update for you tomorrow. And that's CV News for Tuesday. I'm Grant Mangan. Good night.
Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.